And now we get to what's probably the most difficult part of this lesson, the plant life cycle, which is called the alternation of generations. Now, what do I mean by an alternation of generations? Well, first, let me ask you to remember the animal life cycle. What are we animals? Are we mostly diploid or haploid? Well, hopefully you th you're thinking diploid. Yes, animals are multicellular diploid organisms. And I'm using the abbreviation 2M to stand for diploid. Do we have any haploid cells in our bodies? Yes, we have the gametes. Our gametes are the only haploid cells. Plants, they alternate. They alternate between a multicellular diploid stage called a sporophyte and a multicellular haploid stage called the gametophyte. So let's now look at it in more detail. First, let's take the animal life cycle. So we start out as a multicellular diploid organism. Special cells within this organism undergo meiosis. And what does meiosis produce? That's right, gametes, the haploid gametes. And you have both female and male gametes, which will unite in fertilization to produce the diploid zygote. And then the zygote divides by mitosis into a baby and eventually the adult, and you make a new multicellular diploid organism, which can begin this life cycle all over again. Now let's look at plants. So the plant multicellular diploid stage is the sporophyte. Just like in animals, certain special cells can undergo meiosis, but this time, meiosis produces haploid spores, not gametes. What is the difference? So both gametes and spores are haploid, but how are they different? Well, once you make gametes, can they divide again? No. Once gametes are made, they're done. Spores, on the other hand, they can divide again. So spores will divide by mitosis to produce the multicellular haploid gametophyte stage. Now special cells within the gametophyte will, make, will become the gametes. And just like in animals, you have female gametes and male gametes, and they will unite through fertilization to produce a diploid zygote. Then that zygote divides by mitosis to make a new multicellular diploid sporophyte. So you can see the plant life cycle is a lot longer, has a lot more steps, but certain things are in common and hopefully that will help you remember it. Now, as you're looking at it, you might be thinking, well, but what exactly is the gametophyte and what is the sporophyte? When I look at a plant, what am I seeing? Well, it depends on the type of plant. If you're looking at moss, most of the green moss is actually the gametophyte. But right now we're focusing on flowering plants, on the angiosperms. In angiosperms, when you look at them, when you look at a tulip or a tree or a rose, what you're seeing is the sporophyte, the multicellular diploid stage. Most of the, the gametophyte is just not visible to the human eye. So here's a diagram of the angiosperm life cycle. So this flower that you're looking at is the sporophyte. The gametophyte, we have one of them is the pollen grain. So the pollen grain is the male gametophyte. And then something called the embryo sac in the ovules is the female gametophyte. So the embryo sac is the female gametophyte. The pollen grain is the male gametophyte. Most of the plant is the sporophyte. So let's look at the development of the male and female gametophytes in more detail. So do you remember the name of the male reproductive organ? It's the stamen. So here's a close-up of a stamen. The top part of it is called the anther. And inside the anther is where you get the development of the pollen grains. And here's a, a microscope image of a pollen grain. So within the anther are multiple special cells which undergo meiosis. Don't worry about the name of these cells. 
Meiosis produces what? That's right, the spores. So you get the development of the male spores. Then the spores can undergo mitosis. And mitosis produces the male gametophyte, which is the pollen grain. Pollen grain is composed of just three cells. It's not much, but it's still considered a multicellular gametophyte. So these cells are, are one tube cell and two sperm. So this is the male gametophyte, the pollen grain. And what's kind of weird about it is the two sperm are actually inside the tube cell. So here's the tube cell that forms the outer part of the pollen. And here is its uh, tube cell nucleus. And here you can see the two sperm nuclei. Now let's go on to the female gametophyte. So what is the name of the female reproductive organ? It's the carpal. So here in the middle of the flower is the carpal. The bottom part of the carpal is called the ovary. And inside the ovary are one or more ovules. And in the ovules is where you get the development of the female gametophyte. So a special cell inside the ovule will undergo meiosis. Meiosis produces the haploid spores, and this time we're dealing with the um, female spores. Then spores can undergo mitosis, and there are several mitotic divisions to give you a multicellular female gametophyte, which is called the embryo sac. And here's a close-up of the embryo sac. So it's found inside the ovule. So here in the light blue is the outer part of the ovule. And within the ovule is the female gametophyte, the embryo sac. There's a bunch of cells here. At this point, you don't need to remember all of them. I'd like you to focus on a couple of them. The egg cell, this is clearly important. Here's the egg. You can see it right there in yellow. And then here in the middle are two polar nuclei and these are part of what's called the central cell so the central cell is a little weird it has two nuclei and then here on one end is the egg cell and here's an opening to the ovule this in this opening this is where the sperm is going to enter to be able to fertilize the egg so now we've made the pollen grain and the embryo sac through some pollination method. The pollen is delivered to the carpal. And what happens next? So just to remind you, the carpal is made up of the top stigma, uh, a stalk, which can be short or long, called the style, an ovary. And inside the ovary are one or more ovules. The pollen lands on the stigma. Now, the pollen, it's a little reminder, is composed of um, a tube cell with its own nucleus and two sperm inside. To deliver the sperm to the egg, the tube cell begins to form a tube. So this nucleus actually directs the elongation of the cell. So the cell gradually elongates and it begins to grow as this tube um, so here the tube grows through the stigma through the style through the ovary and eventually um, goes towards one of the ovules and delivers the sperm to the egg and you can see the pollen tube growing and penetrating through that little opening at, in the ovule um, to deliver the sperm now here's just pictures of it happening with a pollen that had been genetically engineered to um, be fluorescent. So here hundreds and hundreds of pollen tubes are growing through the ovary and delivering the sperm to the ovules. So here's a pollen tube growing along an ovule and delivering the sperm. The pollen tube has to interact with the maternal tissues for its growth. If you think about it, it's kind of gross. The pollen tube actually penetrates and grows through the maternal tissues. 
but that's what happens. So just a little bit more here is the stigma and the pollen grain lands on the stigma and then has to grow through it. And here you can see it in this image, the pollen grows through this tissue that you can see here in red. And this red tissue is called the transmitting tract. The transmitting tract allows the pollen to grow through it. Inside it are lots of nutrients. For a cell to be able to grow, to elongate, it needs energy. So the transmitting tract provides the energy for the pollen tubes to grow. And it also provides signaling molecules. Cell signaling needs to occur here for the pollen to know where the ovules are. The ovules need to be signaling to the pollen, telling it, come over here, I'm here. Bring the sperm right here. And here's just a stain that does a stain specifically for pollen tubes, so you can see them growing through the ovary. So I wanted to talk a little bit about cell signaling because it's one of your AP Biology enduring understandings, the idea that cells do communicate with each other. In this case, the ovary communicates with the pollen tube as well as the embryo sac is sending out a signal. And here they did a really interesting experiment with cell signaling. So they, have an, they isolated an ovule and allowed three pollen tubes to grow towards the ovule. The asterisk is where that opening in the ovule is where they need to get to. Now right here, the green pollen tube penetrated first. It won the race, it got to the ovule first. As soon as it does, the other pollen tubes change their path. They start growing away from the opening. So here you see the, the green one went inside, but the pink and the red are growing now away. They need to go and find another ovule. So this is really similar to actually what happens in um, animals. Even though in animal fertilization there's no pollen tubes, animals also have a method to make sure that the egg gets fertilized by only one sperm. As soon as the sperm fuses with the egg, no other sperm can enter. So this is similar here. As soon as one pollen tube enters the egg, the embryo sac sends out a signal to tell the other pollen tubes to grow away from it. And now what happens if something goes wrong with this signal? So here in this picture, these two are the normal. You have a microscope image, this is the ovule, and here's that little opening, they're marking it with an arrow and an M. And in yellow, they colored in the pollen tube and it's growing towards the opening and it goes into the opening. See, it doesn't seem to be lost or confused at all. It's taking a direct path right to the opening. That suggests to us that there's a signal telling it where to go. But things can go wrong. So when this signaling is disrupted, in this case, here in these pictures, these four, they have a mutant. And in this mutant, the signaling has been disrupted and the pollen tubes cannot find the signal. You can see the pollen tube is growing towards the ovule, but doesn't go inside, keeps growing. And here, same thing, keeps growing. The green one sort of turns around. They don't know how to find the embryo sac. And this is a very serious condition because now the plant cannot reproduce. And remember, the evolutionary fitness is measured by your ability to reproduce and pass on your genes, which would not happen in this particular mutant. 